I was driving with my son through the semi-desert in South Africa. Sand and rocks all over, no people, and the first town 60 miles away. Then we see a sign on the side of the road, Hot Spring, and we decide to follow it. Once arrived, there was only one woman present, and she seemed very Dutch to me. So I said, hello, and yes, she was Dutch. And then I said, isn't it beautiful out here? Yes, she answered, but there's one place more beautiful, a real desert. Look, and she cuts her camera, opens it, and I look into the face of a Bedouin man with a big mustache. I get my camera, and there is the picture of the very same person, the same man, 10,000 kilometers away in the Egyptian desert. We were so surprised. I saved it on my camera for an unknown reason. And we continued talking. And then I could connect her with a lady who gave her the job she was looking for. And actually, in the next town, she met this lady by pure coincidence. So this meeting had a strong impact on her life. And that's the topic I want to speak about with you, about wonderful, miraculous, remarkable coincidence and how it can enrich your life and can have a lot of impact and it sure helps me in mine. This summer, we did some research about what coincidence means to people and we found that there are several different groups and perhaps you recognize yourself within one of them. There is a group who is absolutely nothing with coincidence. They think everything is logic, at least in hindsight. When something amazing happens, they shrug their shoulders and they say, oh, I'm way too sober, too skeptic, too matter of fact for this. And they even want to prove that it was statistically bound to happen. Perhaps some of you here are in this group, could be. And then there is a group who says now and then, Oh, such a coincidence. I ran into Mr. So-and-so just at that very moment. Or guess what? I met my neighbor on the camping site in France. And probably many of you know the phenomenon that you, when you're just thinking of someone you need to contact, this person calls you on the phone. And then many of us tend to zoom in into remarkable coincidence when it's about life events, transition transitional moments, even the sober skeptic ones. And that is about moments that how you met your lover, your partner, your house, or the wanted job. And then there is a group, smaller group, who says, coincidence is like oxygen for me, like the cup of coffee in the morning. I cannot live without. There's also a group who uses coincidence as a strong guide in life. They secretly expect the unexpected to occur, to guide them. It's a paradox, eh? expecting the unexpected. And there is a group, many of my students are there. They say, well, everything is coincidence, so why bother? And there is a last group who says, uh, I enjoy it as a playful, even reconforting sign that there is so much that we cannot explain. Dr. Jung was the one who gave the name of synchronicity to meaningful coincidence. That is when two or more elements come together in time, unexpectedly, but with a strong meaning for the observer. It breaks with our Western dominant thinking pattern of linearity, of cause and effect. That is that you can explain almost everything if you only have overview. So what I noticed when something amazing happens that many people tend to ignore it. They, they don't want to see it. it. It doesn't fit with their concept of the world. They, they get away from it. They even shut their eyes. And I think it could be a pity because you can miss very valuable opportunities. And for science, for scientific research, coincidence is a tough one you can't find proof for it because it's unpredictable, unexpected, usually unique, very personal and subjective, not to be planned. 
But the choice is always up to us. The choice to remark it consciously, and then the choice to find a meaning in it and to do something with it or not. And sometimes you grab the meaning right away and you can use it as a compass if you want. And often it doesn't reveal itself immediately. It can take years for understanding. It's like the symbolic language in dreams. And sometimes understanding comes never. Now I would like to share some of my personal stories and I hope you can enrich your own theories about this phenomenon with them. And I hope to amuse you and to amaze you also. So perhaps sometimes you postpone your tasks. Yeah, anybody? <laughs> I was doing this, sitting behind my computer, procrastinating the real things that had to be done. So I thought, let's play for a while. Let's type in an invented word, a random word, and see where it gets me on the internet. Now, internet is a very useful instrument to create synchronicity because it connects all the items around a the theme. Well, I typed in this random invented word and it brought me right away to Mexico to news about Professor Mauro, a professor in creative thinking that I met years ago in a congress. But then I read, he just passed away. I was feeling very, very sorry. Not even half an hour later, I get a telephone call from someone I met in the same congress as the professor and I hadn't spoken to in years. And he says, I'm writing my PhD. I need to speak to Professor Mauro. You're the one who can bring me in contact with him. And I told him, unfortunately, he just passed away. Not long after this event, I was postponing my work again. I had to call a professor in mathematics for an interview appointment, and I was a bit nervous about this, so I was putting it off a little more, thinking, ah, I will do the same game, I will think of an, a strange word, and, and I couldn't think of any. So I decided to do it with my eyes shut. I typed in something. And I look and I see, okay, this will surely lead to nothing, but I typed in enter anyway. Oh, there was one hit. And yes, it was in Groningen at the university inside the website of the professor I had to call. It was part of the mathematical formula. Impossible. So this crazy event brought me to grab the telephone, make the appointment. And during the interview, I told him about this coincidence. And I guess you can imagine how a professor in mathematics will react. Uh-huh. He smiled politely. <laughs> in Dutch, in Flemish, we have a beautiful word for coincidence. It is toeval. That means it falls towards you. And I have an example of this. I was preparing a presentation for the Academy of Management 200 kilometers from my home. And preparing my briefcase, suddenly a business card falls out. I look at the name. Hey, wow, this name is on the participants list of this evening. How is it possible? I got it six years before, it was hidden. I go to the hall, I get my second briefcase, always have more than one, and another business card falls out. I look, another name of the participants list. Two years ago, I stuck it there. I was surprised. I drive to this place. Once arrived, there is a dinner before my presentation, and there's a table seating. Guess where I am seated? Yes in between the two business cards. And one of them says, I have a problem, you can help me with it. And indeed, from that moment on, I worked two years as a consultant for him. So this event had a big impact on my life and work. And a lot of other coincidences happened during this trip. Almost too many to handle, and this happens sometimes, but then it can be silent for weeks. And then I think, ooh, 
That's, is the magic gone? Until something happens like the next example. I was having a business lunch appointment with an unknown person after my painting class. And I painted a, a copy of a, a picture I'll show you, hopefully. Yeah, there it is. Not such a common picture. I took the fresh painting, this one, with me to my appointment. And I showed it to him. And his eyes went big. He said nothing. He caught his mobile. And he shows me the same picture. It is his queen saver. And it appears to be his girlfriend's favorite picture. So this event suggested immediate success for our collaboration, but it still didn't happen. So sometimes you wonder, why does it happen? You don't see any follow-up or consequences, but perhaps after this TED talk, huh? perhaps. So many things happen in coincidence with images, paintings, books, pictures. I could tell you a whole series. Like pictures falling out of albums of people that you're thinking of that you need to contact, or the same paintings that you find in two far remote places within one day, or you open the book on the right page, the right word, just before entering the examination room, helping you to pass and get good grades. Hopefully, you have these experiences. I'm, I'm very grateful for them in mine. It helped me a lot. So these were some examples in my work. But of course, many things happen in personal life. Like last summer, I was sitting around the fire uh, in a garden party. And um, a lady comes to me and she says, you've always these kind of coincidences. I was talking about a hare, the animal, and then one crossed the road, how can this happen? And my neighbor, a skeptic man, wants to be funny, and he says, well, let's talk about giraffes then, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> but his mouth falls open, mine too, when the lady of the house, at that very moment, comes out, enters the garden with carrying a huge wooden giraffe. And we ask another man, and he being a biologist, he's spoils the party, he names the Manta Ray. Okay, impossible to see one. I go home just after that. I open my computer, and this is what I see. And until today, I don't understand how it came there. And uh, I don't understand the meaning. But just to wonder and smile is valuable as well. One more story. It's still an ongoing one. I think this chain of coincidences has not stopped. It's the story of the Philosopher's Stone. Here it is. I, last, last year, a member of my Women's Society Club said to me, I bought you a present, and I was kind of surprised because it wasn't my birthday, but I went over to collect it, and it was this stone, an azestulite, also called Philosopher's Stone. And we started talking, and I told her about my worries for an African friend who was very, very ill at that moment. And how could I help him? And she, being a doctor, asked further questions. And then she came up with a pile of the right medicines left by her mother. I got this bag of medicines, took it with me to the post office to send it to Benin, to Africa. But it's not possible to send medicines by post. So I had this problem, how can I get this big, this medicines there? And very fast. A few days later, there is a lady in a Congress. She comes to me and the first sentence she says is, I will go to Benin next week for my work. And I say, wow, can you take a bag of medicines with you? Of course, she said, if you take a laptop with you to Tanzania. Of course, I say. I will go to Tanzania in three weeks. Ah, we were flabbergasted. When the lady was in Benin, she was too far away from my friend to bring the medicines. This was a big problem for her. I didn't know. But at the same time, I found an old album, photo album of my trip to Benin. And looking at it, I saw my contact person. And I took a picture with my mobile. And wrote the name, Madame Yononfun, 
and send it with WhatsApp to the lady carrying the medicines. And then I thought, why am I doing this? I look completely silly. It doesn't make any sense sending old pictures. But at that moment, my lady there received a guest telling her that he was going next day to Madame Jondonfun in Porto Novo. And he took the medicines with him and they came in time to help my friend survive. So following my impulse proved to be right. Then when the lady returned, I had to bring this laptop to a taxi driver in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. And I had the same problem being 10 hours away from the city, how to get the laptop over there. I, my hotel was in a remote area, not very touristic at all. But suddenly, five young guys arrived because of a flat tire in front of the hotel. And they spoke Dutch. And they appeared to be students of my university, of my faculty. And they were studying in Dar es Salaam. Yes, they took the, medicine, the laptop with them. And once they found a taxi driver, he was, to our big, big surprise, a fellow student in the same faculty. So they became friends, and due to this event, our project got the necessary help of the University of Tanzania. N yeah, many coincidences happened with this stone and are still happening. I cannot tell them all. It is amazing, and it's like a woven web. And I expect more to happen. So what will be next? I expect the unexpected. So many of my stories are related to Africa. And why? I, working in Africa, it has all started with a lot of synchronicity. And it's my big passion. And it's very fulfilling. So I think when you are doing things that are related to your special path in life and connected to your big dreams and your wishes, and focused on a goal you're committed to, then amazing coincidence can accumulate. It is as if you are attracting it. It clears the way. So what must you do when you want to stimulate remarkable coincidence in your life? Connect to your dreams. And when you're well connected to your inner drives and motives, you will be able to remark the signs that help you create flow and open your ears and eyes, zoom into coincidences, because you, probably you will discover more layers of connectivity. And if you love, if you like to, to connect people, to connect ideas, it makes it much more easier. Personally, I love it and I made my work from it. I work with creative thinking methods in companies, connecting things that have not relation before, but create something new. And whenever I meet new persons, I usually ask questions, always hoping to find a connection or to create one. So give in to intuition and impulses, even when you think it's not logical. And for work and science, an open mind to, un to the unexpected, beyond known theories, can help you to create new perspectives of reality and perhaps give you this valuable breakthrough. Be also attentive to the role of music in coincidence and the songs that come up to your head, especially when you sing the wrong lyrics. It's my experience. There's usually a message for your current situation. So listen to it. And talking about music, could it be that amazing coincidence is related to the phenomenon of resonance? That is that two elements that having the same frequency, they tend to resonate and make each other stronger. So this is an interesting scientific perspective to explore further. And next time you're postponing your work again, you have a delay, you miss your train, you have to make a detour. Remember that coincidence very often makes use of a delay. So don't worry and do like my colleague. Look around you, 
with a curious, joyful eye, thinking, what coincidence is made possible because of this delay? Yes, and I want to finish with this last sentence. I, I love this sentence. It is uh, from Hermann Hesse, a friend of Jung. It is, every beginning has some magic inside. So take it with you. And the last one is my advice. I hope you love it. Enjoy the remarkable coincidence that reveals itself on your path. Enjoy the wonder of it. Thank you.